I remember Lackawanna, where, you know, Bethlehem Steel, where I worked right after high school. If I worked like the night shift, if I was going in on the 11 o'clock to 7 in the morning shift, I'd be pulling up, and if they were dumping, it was right on Lake Erie, if they were dumping the slag into Lake Erie, I swear to God, it was like another sunset because the, the sky around there would be like, mostly reds, but like these indescribable like reds and ochres just lighting up the sky. And then they'd dump another load of slag and it would just light the whole horizon over the steel mill. It was pretty fascinating. I started looking for things that I consider to be the most uh, soul crushing and ugly. And saying, taken into context, this could make an interesting painting and that's a pastel. I'm trying to recreate this piece in oil. And I know it's a smaller format and that's gonna be problematic, but I'm sure they'll work out as I go through the piece because the painting will reveal itself to you. Yeah, it's almost what I want. I had good instruction. I took a painting course at Rhode Island College with, uh, you know Sam Ames? God, he's a hell of a painter. He said, put everything in a painting, you know? He said, wreck it, put it all in, and he goes, then start editing. You know, he got, he got me like over the, he gets you away from the, being precious about whatever surface you're working on. That was one of the most important things uh, any instructor ever taught me. I don't mind my paintings being in somebody's parlor as long as uh, they've given me enough money in exchange for me to get more paint. Because <laughs> there's always like, there's always going to be, you're going to do that greatest painting tomorrow, you know. They've enabled you to paint more by giving you some money. And, the, and that painting, you may not, you don't get to have it with you anymore even though you love it, but you know it's getting a good home. I never got 100% committed to college. <laughs> and I took some courses at uh, community college. And I took one summer off, and that's how I got drafted. Unwillingly, but I figured, like, throw the dice and do my two years. And I got out of the Army. I had the GI Bill. I went to UB um, at SUNY at Buffalo. Did everything in night school. I realized that I wanted to spend more time painting and learning how to paint and draw, and even though I worked, I, uh, I did that. I certainly was like uh, searching for direction in the 70s. A friend of mine's girlfriend came to Rhode Island to do a dance clinic at Brown in the summer, and uh, I was came up with the woman I was dating at the time, and we had a great time in Rhode Island, and we went to the Cape, and we went to uh, hit all the Rhode Island beaches. I had always loved the ocean, and I'm not making this up. I knew there was a time where I wanted to live on the New England coast. I came up to visit them again in Thanksgiving, and I met a friend through a friend of theirs. It was Tony Janello, actually. He said, you got a lot of problems, but he goes, I think I can help. He said, I think, uh, I think you've got some, a little bit of promise. If you want to take this seriously, I said, I think I can teach you how to uh, paint. So he, I've got a lot of good instruction from him, and uh, I think I made a good decision by deciding to uh, pick up and move to Rhode Island. And then I met my wife and started putting down some roots here. She had a uh, degree in art history and was making a pretty good living as a waitress with that degree. She took a summer program in archaeology at Rhode Island College and did so well that uh, the professor, with whom we're still friends, decided that she should uh, be on his uh, team or staff. 
We were just married and we didn't have children yet. As a spouse, I got a fee waiver. So I just went and signed up for all the uh, studio courses at Rhode Island College. I'm not the most uh, extroverted, but I'm certainly not an introvert. Um, I can be, I can ham it up pretty good, you know. But I, I don't want to live, uh, I don't want to paint in a vacuum. Music and, the, and visual work are very closely tied, and they're very closely tied in, in my motivation to paint. Even though I love listening to music, I think maybe I like being inspired by music. I think my natural talent lies more in music, and I never developed it. I have perfect pitch. I should have, like, taken a musical instrument and become serious about playing music. I could sing. But I only have eyes for you, dear. The moon may be high, but I can't see a thing in the sky. <laughs> you lie, you? Yeah, well, you know what I mean. Yeah. I mean, that tune was right. I can oh. carry a tune. Yeah. yeah. Painting's a very solitary and focused thing. I know when I instruct people in painting, I always say, you want to <laughs> tread the line between being loose and focusing on what you're doing and paying attention to what you're doing, but at the same time, you know, you don't want to be too careful. You can't, being loose doesn't mean being careless and not paying attention. The act of painting is not a real coordinated thing between the mind and the hand. It's like, you know, the, the things that painting demands of your body, of your mind and body, aren't really that insurmountable. It's really in the looking. I'm not setting out to make anything beautiful, just um, honest, I guess.